I'll be looking at the impact of uh, conditional cash transfers programs on household work decisions in Ghana. And I think uh, the second speaker has really introduced my work for me in the sense of the methodology as well as uh, some other things. So it will make my work very easy. Well, um, by way of outline, I look at some introduction. I look at objectives, evidence from other studies. I look at the LEAP program actually in Ghana. I look at some the methodology, results findings, some conclusions, and then I'll go to some policy recommendations. So CCT programs or conditional cash transfer programs has been widely used uh, in the past decade. And these are used by mostly developing countries as a way of trying to use it as a policy tool to increase human capital. Now, there have been arguments that uh, once you are giving people some cash, then it will create some dis disincentives to work. But then we will try to see if that's the case for Ghana. Now, uh, there has been some successes that has been going on with this uh, CCT programs, and that can be recorded in short-term improvements in consumption, education, and in health, as uh, seen by work done by Schulz, Gettler, and Rollins, and Rubio. Now, some studies have favor, uh, brought out some favors in terms of these conditional cash transfer schemes. Uh, one is uh, Scofias and Maro, and then they assess the impact of the Mexico Progressa program. And what they found out was that it had not discouraged people from working. Again, Aditin and others also in 2009 also saw that um, some cash transfer programs had led to increased employment among prime-aged adults. And Ferro and others also find uh, that uh, Bolsa Escola for Brazil, that it had increased probability of mothers and fathers' participation in labor force uh, in the country. Now, Oliveira also finds that for the Brazil's Bolsa Familia, that labor market participation rate for households or people that were in the benefiting, uh, beneficiary households, their participation rate was about 4.3 percentage more than those who were not in the participating households. Now, to those who have, uh, have something against the uh, CCT, Malicious and Flaws also use the Nicaragua's uh, Red Deportation Social. I, I hope I'm mentioning it right. Uh, they find no effect on labor supply. Again, Bertrand and others also use some cross-sectional data. And they find that uh, pension receipts also substantially lowers the labor market participation rate of uh, working age adults. Now, to the main point of uh, the LEAP in Ghana. The LEAP is a livelihood empowerment against poverty. So the actual objective of this paper was trying to see whether this program, that's this uh, conditional cash, uh, cash transfer program, has increased the number of hours that uh, households are working. So again, we try to not just look at the holistic approach, but try to uh, decompose it into agricultural work, uh, work on non-farm, as well as uh, work that are coming from paid employment. Now, the main objective of the LEAP in Ghana is, uh, first of all, to alleviate short-term poverty, and then to encourage long-term human capital development. Now, this was done with the aim of trying to increase school enrollment, also attendance and retention of children. So I, on the, uh, the, the reason, why, the conditions for which you can receive this amount was the fact that you need to let those beneficiary children go to school, and then you also have to be enrolled on a national health insurance scheme. So payments are being done based on the fact that you provide uh, something that says you have been registered with a national health insurance scheme. Otherwise, you don't get a fund. Now, how was the targeting done? Uh, we have. Uh, GLSS-5, that's the Ghana Living Standard Survey 5, and that one was done around 2005, and identified 164,370 households uh, being the bottom 20% of the extremely poor households in Ghana. So these are the ones that are being targeted. So it includes uh, subsistence farmers and fisher folks, and then the extremely poor citizens, those above 50, uh, 65 years, who have no subsistence support, and again, it looks at uh, persons with severe disabilities, so without any productive capacity. And then they also looked at uh, those caregivers who look after these orphans and vulnerable children. 
So they are also beneficiaries, and particularly children that are affected by HIV AIDS, and then children with severe disabilities. Also, pregnant women, lactating mothers with HIV were, are also part of the target group. Now, not all the fund is uh, conditional. There are some group of people that are getting the money un unconditionally, and these are the ones that have severe disabilities as well as uh, those who are very aged. So, as of 2008, that's, that was when the program started. Uh, beneficiaries were receiving eight Ghana CDs, and uh, with the exchange rate as, as at uh, 2008, it was about one dollar to one Ghana CDs. This was uh, immediate, immediately after Ghana's uh, redenomination process. So, in July 2012, that was last year, this was revised to 12 Ghana CDs, to 36 Ghana CDs. So it depends on the number of beneficiaries in the household. So if it is just one beneficiary, then you get 12 Ghana CDs, but if it's four or more, then you get 36 Ghana CDs. And the exchange rate as at 2012 was one to $1 to 1.88 Ghana CDs. Now, uh, in 2012, there's, initially, this whole program was uh, the government of Ghana, the flagship of the government of Ghana. He was actually doing all that. But now there have been some external supports that are coming in uh, through DFID, the World Bank. Uh, these were the amounts that were received in last year to help with the program. Now, as of 2010, the coverage for the program had been 35,000 households. But as of uh, this year, there has been uh, 71,456 households that have been covered. And the target for 2015 is to get to 200,000 200, households. Now, one thing that has to be clear here is that the amount that was supposed to be given to these guys were supposed to be adequate and acceptable. And in the case, it shouldn't encourage unemployment. So we are giving the money, you shouldn't give you the opportunity to not work. And then it shouldn't also create this dependency on the fund, such that once you get the money, that is it. And then depend, uh, it shouldn't also benefit beneficiary households excessively to bring in the inequalities that uh, will happen in these communities. Now to the methodology. Um, I'll go straight to the table. We have uh, two different times that we went to the field to collect data. So the first year, that is the baseline, was in 2010, and then the follow-up period was in uh, 2012. So the LEAP, that is the program, those are the treatment people, those are the ones that are getting the benefits. And then the control groups are those who are in the same communities but are not getting uh, the benefit. So uh, we, we, we named it Yale in the sense that it's uh, Yale, Yale University in collaboration with um, ESA that has in 2010, uh, it's a national survey that they undertook. So they had about 5,009 households. So out of that, a propensity score matching was done and then because those in the LEAP communities were matched to those uh, from the Yale communities, and then we were able to get a match or a counterfactual for them. And we, we had about 858 households in the control group. Now, what actually we wanted to look at is to find any significant e effect of the cash transfer program uh, on the treatment group that uh, they should have if the program has any impact, then we should see that the treatment group are ha quite higher in terms of uh, any uh, their characteristics as, as opposed to the, those in the control group. So we also wanted to see if uh, the number of hours that they were working had increased overall with the program or it has decreased. And we also had uh, the composition to the aggregate paid employment and non-employment. So we adopt the double difference as uh, the second speaker uh, said. So it has been widely used in literature to look at these outcome variables in randomized experiments. So that is what we tried to use. So this is uh, the model we use and not going through that. We go to some descriptive results. So for these households, we find out that the average household size was uh, 3.9. And then the sex of the household heads were 54% for women. Uh, probably a question will come why women are having 
this high percentage in the sense that these um, caregivers are mostly women. Those who take care of the orphan and vulnerable children are mostly women. So once they target them, that's why we are having the heads of households head for women being 54 as opposed to 45 for men. Now with um, educational level, we see those who are having no education to be about 46.5%. Uh, those with senior high school and below, they are about 49.4%. In terms of distribution of age of the household heads, we, we could see 44.5 for those who are about 65 plus years. And uh, in terms of marital status, those who are married about 42%, those who are widowed about, are about 32.6%. Now, in looking at the dependent variable, the dependent variable is the total or average, annual average labor hours worked in the whole year. And so we try to look at the comparison between the, those who are getting the benefits as opposed to those who are not getting the benefits to see what is happening. So we have agric, hours work for agric, hours work for paid employment, and that of non-farm enterprise. And we could see that for the baseline, that is the treatment are having about 1,041 hours, whilst the controls are having about 1,451. So in order not to get confused, I brought another table below and those are in terms of days in a year. So you could see in total, we have about 130 days of hours uh, of work done by the treatment group, those are the beneficiaries, as opposed to 181 for the control group. Now these are the results. So what actually is going to be measuring the impact of the program is um, the third variable that is we've named the three time variable. So it's an interaction between the treatment variable and then the time variable, that's the trend variable. And so we, I have equation one to eight. Equation one are uh, mostly just um, the treatment variable, the time variable, and then the interaction. But then in equation two, we do more of controlling for other factors. And so for equation one, we have it for the total labor hours. This total labor hours includes the work, work for agric, paid employment, and then non-farm all together. And then the subsequent ones from equation three and four are just for agric work. And then five and six is just for paid employment. And then seven and eight is just for non-farm enterprise. So we wanted to see the variations in the impact of this program. So the results are summarized. Um, these are some of the variables we use. So in conclusion and policy implications, this is what we find. We find that the program decreased total hours worked relative to the control group. Specifically, it decreased total labor hours worked. Why? Probably we'll have an answer for it later. But then it's also increased hours worked for paid employment. So there seemed to be some switch from uh, hours worked on agric to that, that is worked for paid employment. Now, but we see no impact on the program, of the program on um, hours worked for non-farm enterprises. Now we also see some huge uh, in, um, influence of non-institutional transfers. So this is not the transfers I'm talking about. These are other transfers aside that um, cash transfers that are, they are receiving. So aside that, other people to remit and then they get these transfers. So we see that it actually reduces the total labor hours worked together for a great, uh, for paid employment and then for non-farm, meaning that when money comes into the households, it really does not uh, give them the opportunity. They don't really feel like working somehow. Okay, so marginal impacts also to the non-institutional transfers, it seems to be about uh, hours worked for, total labor hours worked reduces about 10% for agriculture, paid employment, and in overall. Now, some of the variables we considered or we controlled for, we see that a uh, health status of the household members. So if they are healthier, they seem to increase the hours worked for uh, agric, all the categories. If they have males in the household, okay, so households that had males, in, uh, and then those households that had larger household sizes, and then those households that had cultivating, uh, cultivated land sizes, large cultivated, uh, land sizes also increase the hour worked for agriculture. But again, we see that uh, households with electricity, 
they tend to increase their hours worked for non-farm enterprises. Non-farm enterprises because if they have light, they could stay on for quite a long time before going to bed and they could do marketing or trade during uh, the evenings. Now to the recommendations. Uh, the results is suggesting that this cash transfer is leading to a reduction in labor supply. Well, we tried to get some possible explanations. And so what we find out was that children are now attending school because uh, in looking at the labor hours worked, it was for men, women, and children. So now that children are attending school, definitely they are not in the house to go to the farms with the family. And so that is uh, one reason what, that we looked out for. And so this uh, has been confirmed by work by Handa et al. These were consultants that were uh, consulted to do an in-depth analysis on the LEAP program for Ghana. And this is one, one of the findings that they had. So this, they saw that um, the, the LEAP had increased school among uh, secondary school age children by seven percentage points and also reduced grade repetition and among both primary and secondary uh, age children. Also, it had re reduced absenteeism in class by about 10 percentage points. So this could be used to explain why. Now, the use of also high labor and herbicides. So we were thinking that probably uh, once you are getting the money, you are able to use the money to hire people to work on the farm. And for that reason, you stay back and not work. Also, probably uh, if you are using herbicides, instead of going to the farm and weeding, you just go once, spray the place, and that is it. Okay, so we tried to look at all that, but then we realized that these were not contributing factors to why they were reducing the number of hours worked. So probably the number of children who are going to school will be the best way to explain the phenomenon. So the recommendation is, uh, we highly recommend that in subsequent targeting, because you are targeting the poor, so if you don't target them well, you, anyhow, then we, we don't get the expected results. But then we also recommend the continuation of the intervention because it has really chopped some successes. So it should uh, continue to give the broader positive outlook that it has. Now, one thing that we realized was uh, that these people, beneficiaries, were not receiving their income on time. And so the actual thing supposed to be done is to be, it should be coming in uh, every two months. So February, April, and then it continues that way till December. But then what we went, when we went to the field, what we saw was that if they could get it in, say, February, and it could come in, say, April, uh, not coming in April, but, say, May or June. So it compounds. And we all know consumption. Once your income compounds and you get it, it doesn't smoothen out your, uh, the pattern with which you consume. So measuring the impacts at these uh, instances becomes quite tricky. So what we recommend is that the payment should be done on time and on a regular basis. Also, we saw a drift from uh, the agri work to paid employment, but I think that is the next question we probably will have to look at. Why the drift? And is the drift really growth enhancing for the bigger economy? So that is the next step for researchers to continue. So once you get the opportunity again, I think we'll be looking at some of these things. Thank you for your attention. Yeah.